Hi, welcome back to another Owl Crate unboxing video. Uh, this is for Owl Crate's December box, um, so let's get started. So at the beginning of these uh, Owl Crate boxes, um, I like to go back and review the previous boxes book, particularly. Um, uh, just to talk about whether it was good or not good. You don't really get a chance to kind of read the book when you're unboxing it. So I had the chance to read last um, last month's book, which is Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. And I actually saw this book uh, in, in, a, in a local bookstore that I went to this past weekend. And the cover was really different. It was completely dark, uh, almost reverse of what this cover is. <clears throat> and I almost think that that cover is actually more fitting to the theme of the book once I read it. So I'm going to start off by saying I really, really enjoyed reading this book. The way it was written was very lyrical, poetic. There were a lot of repeated circular themes and, uh, and metaphors and imagery used. You, I will say that I anticipated the first kind of mystery of this book. I kind of, I kind of knew it was coming, but I didn't see where it would go after that. And so I was pleasantly surprised by the ending of the book. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was, it's told in the from the narrative focus of this young girl who, for all intents and purposes, is all alone in this wood, trying to figure out where she comes from and what her family history is and how she fits in with all of that. So in a way, the tone is very melancholic. It's very solemn and it fits with kind of the fear and the terror of a dark force where you don't really quite have control, where humans don't have control. And then a lot of it comes from magic and, and, the, and mystic forces that come into play into this girl's life, but also very much kind of human um, interactions with her and particularly um, the boy she meets in the book. And I won't give out any more spoilers because I really think it's worth reading the book and seeing how you like it and how you like her story. Um, I will say that it reminded me a lot of kind of um, uh, not so much fantasy books because it felt it was more grounded and more realistic than that which I thought was refreshing even though it did have magic in it and it did have kind of unexplained forces of nature in it it didn't feel too high fantasy at all it was very much kind of mysteries that you don't quite understand and you can't explain that happen um, in this girl's life and it was it was pleasantly uh, surprising and in the in-between chapters kind of um, in here particularly when you get to a dark page kind of reflects on the the matriarchal line of her family all the women in her family the walker women are witches and it gives a little history about each of the women in her family line and I thought that was a really nice touch it was really interesting to see what their stories were and sort of lends into this this lore of like uh, each generation, mistakes that were made, things that you learn, what do you learn um, from the people before you? And I, I just thought it was it was an interesting read and definitely recommend it. Um, and I wasn't expecting how, uh, how grounded and poetic this book was. So yeah, thumbs up for this one. Also, I wanted to do just a really quick book haul. Uh, I went to San Francisco this past weekend um, and I visited uh, one of my favorite bookstores, which is Green Apple Books. And I found some books there that I have been searching for and I really, really wanted to read because I'm huge fans of these series. And the first one is the next book in the Children of Blood and Bone series by Tommy Adeyemi. Um, I'm really, really uh, excited about this book. If you haven't read the first of this series, um, which is what this book is, uh, I, I highly, highly recommend it. This was my favorite book of last year, um, and I tore through that book like nobody's business. And it was at least um, 
twice the length of this. It was, I, I, had my, I had my husband read it, I had some friends read it, and they were really shocked by how violent it was, and for me it didn't feel that way. Um, it, it, it felt like any kind of fantasy adventure, uh, journey quest kind of book, and so um, I will say that some people did find the, her, the first book a little violent, but for me, it fit with the arc of the story, it fit with what the character, the main character is trying to do, which is basically harness and rekindle her magic and the magic in her family line. Again, another storyline where the females definitely dominate. Um, I know that the this series is, I think the rights for the movie were bought, so who knows what they're gonna do with it, but I'm super, super okay. excited. So I will say that if you love the Avatar series, you will love this book. It is full of all the elemental magic and, and the different kinds of relationships with people who wield magic. Um, it also has a lot to do with uh, West African mythology. So if you love that, this is a great book to read. Um, I will say that the author was really inspired to write this after the Trayvon Martin shootings. And so if you are interested in that kind of um, narrative of finding a justice and finding your place again in a world where everything is out to get you and your people are oppressed and you know just trying to live your human life like if this is a this is a great great series to go for um, it is part of whole diverse book series like I really recommend this I cannot recommend it more it is so good the second book series I was really excited for was uh, Holly Black's um, Book of the Air series, and I read through The Cruel Prince, and then right before um, The Wicked King came out, and I, I tore through both of those, and I can't wait for the next one. I really wanted to get uh, the Fairy Loot special uh, box, but it sold out. Uh, and I wasn't able to get my hands on it, but I was pleasantly surprised when I walked into Green Apple and I saw that they had a whole bunch of signed copies of The Queen of Nothing. Now this is the third book in the series and I'm really, really excited. I'm a little sad it's not as, um, as many pages as I thought it would be, but I'm not gonna write it off just yet. Um, this is a signed copy, which is so cool. And along with the book on the shelf, there were actually these little pin and bookmarks um, that came along with it, which was really nice and it was kind of with purchase. So I was super stoked uh, to get this and um, it kind of made up for the fact that I didn't get the special fairy loot box, but that's fine. I am still really excited to read this. It totally was left on a cliffhanger on the second book. So now I, I, I'm kind of sad though because I'm, you know, once you get to the last book of the series, it kind of ends and depending on the ending, it's either good or not as uh, satisfying. So I'm hoping that Holly Black did a good job. The third book in my book haul is actually one that was recommended to me by a friend. Um, it's called Frankly in Love by David Yoon. Now he's actually married to Nicola Yoon who wrote The Sun is Also a Star and Everything Everything. Um, I didn't really love Everything Everything. I thought the ending was a little like, uh, come on. Um, it was it was a little subpar in that regards. But I really love The Sun is Also a Star. I know they made a movie out of it. Uh, I loved that story between those two characters. That was really great. So uh, I was bemoaning the fact that I, there weren't a lot of books about uh, the Korean American experience or more like second generation Asian American experiences and just like everyday books. Books that were just about uh, life and not necessarily about like the immigrant experience or anything like that. Um, that are very typically told in novels and I want a kind of more a more modern telling of what it's like just to be Asian American um, growing up here in the US. So uh, they recommended this book to me frankly in love um, and it's cool I got it at um, actually didn't get this at Green Apple I got this at Target and it had sprayed edges already in it so I was like oh that's really nice. Um, so I'm gonna try to give this a try it's about this guy Frank who falls in love and has to figure out uh, his life and just, you know, problems in school and social issues. So I'm excited to see how this goes. Um, his parents 
are uh, Korean speaking and they are they speak too many English but there's also parts of the book that I noticed that are actually in Korean which I thought was really cool um, so I'm hoping it will be good I'll give you I'll, I'm gonna do a little bit of a review of those three books when I'm finished reading them to let you know how I like it but uh, in case you're looking for something that's a little uh, out of the box and something perhaps that you haven't read about before if you're uh, kind of new to diverse books um, this might be one to start especially if you love Nicola Yoon books so um, it'll be interesting to compare and contrast the two um, seeing that they live together okay so let's get into the owl crate box um, open it up I'm assuming there's going to be lots of things in it. Um, let's see how it goes. All right. All right. So this month's December box is called Tales of Trickery. And this is the spoiler cart. So I'm not going to try to read it, but here's what the artwork looks like. It's, it's quite nice. I like um, the art style in that. Um, and so let's see what's going on. First thing out of the box, um, first thing out of the box I see is a novelly yours candles mount ruin Ooh, fire and cinnamon chai um, it's a soy candle for bookworms and exclusively made for owl crates so let's smell it let's see mm. oh that's interesting oh, and i like the wick is different the wick is um not a string necessarily it's just like a, a i can't it's like a wooden piece right there in the middle hmm yeah it's, it's nice because it's not you know how sometimes cinnamon candles are like really strong um, and this one in particular it's more sweet and subtle so that's nice I don't know what Mount Ruin is in regard to but I'm, I suppose I'll check out the uh, spoiler card to see what that's about the second item I am grabbing out of the box is they are earmuffs. They're the kind that go behind your uh, behind your head. This is the Caravel Rose earmuffs. This is an Owl Crate exclus exclusive. Oh, enjoy epic twists and turns while playing a game of Caraval. Don't get too swept away. Um, Caraval. I haven't read that book yet, but this is the one where in the back. It, there's plastic in here and you can feel it there's it's like an adjustable um, way to kind of sit with these if it's too big or too small you can pull it out and pull it in see but they <laughs> they fit around your ears like this and that way they're not above your head they come from behind so that's kind of nice um, it doesn't get that cold here but um, outside but this would be nice in case you know, you were spending a lot of time outdoors in really cold weather. It's really soft. That's quite nice. It's fur lined. It's pretty. Uh, the next item I'm pulling out of the box is, oh, it looks, oh, it looks like a book, a book sleeve, a padded book sleeve. So these are kind of ways that you can put, um, put your book inside of it, take it with you, protect it. Um, it's always good for me if I'm, uh, if I'm going somewhere and I want to pack um, a book to read after I finish my other book, then I'll put a book in here and stick it in my suitcase or my book bag. Ignore my cat back there. She is enthralled by the birds and she can't get enough. <laughs> All right, the next thing in my box is, oh, it looks like a pack of colored pencils. Um, they are exclusive to Owl Crate and specifically designed for bookworms in mind. Now, I'm quite, not quite sure what that means, um, other than it just looks like a regular set of standard uh, coloring pencils. Yeah, pretty standard set of colored pencils. I mean, where you have all your colors. Um, I'm not sure what the intent is for these but let's keep going there must be a reason because last time they gave us something they gave us some stickers for the planner book and that made sense why they gave us so maybe we're supposed to use these pencils for something else so let's keep going ah okay <laughs> 
it makes sense. So they've also included this Owl Crate coloring book. Um, I don't know how many of you are into kind of the adult coloring is in the last 10 years it's kind of exploded again and people are doing it. So this looks like it's kind of an adult coloring book and you can go through and they probably have book themed uh, book themed things to color in. So official Phoenix Rider Club. I don't know what this is from. Iron must be tested. This looks like we hunt the flame, the light and darkness. This is Child of the Library. It's cool. There's just different motifs and different illustrations that you can color. Um, oh wait, hold on. This looks like the pin, the designs of the pins that I got in the la in the November October box and the November box. So maybe these are past pin designs. <gasps> I was right. <laughs> so it looks like they have taken all of the pin designs from 2019 and made them into coloring book um, outlines so you could color in, which is really cool, which is why I don't really recognize all the other ones because I only started getting the book box um, beginning in October. So I only have these three. Oh, which means I'm gonna get this pin soon. And yes, that is the next pin that I'm getting. <clears throat> so here's the next uh, book, bo pin, book box pin. It is for Tales of Trickery, December 2019. Here we go. Designed in collaboration with Read and Wonder. And it usually it has something to do with the book we're about to read. So we'll see how it, this fits in. The next thing in the box is this Sky in the Deep hand warmers. I mean, I've heard of hand warmers before, and I read Sky in the Deep. Not my favorite of books, but. <laughs> so they have it themed for the book, which I think is hilarious because you can get these at um, drugstores and different shops where, you know, it's, it's a pack like this, and there is a little disc inside that when you crack it, it creates a chemical reaction and basically turns this into like a heating pad. <clears throat> so it looks like that's what this is. And then inside of it, this is really cute. Inside there's a little knitted uh, holder. So once you get this, it's qu actually quite hot. Once you, um, once you pull that, I mean, break that tab, it gets quite warm, so it looks like you take this and it's like a little mini, uh, like a water bottle holder, a hot water bottle holder, except, except in this case it's an artificial chemical holder. So you can stick it in here and then it turns into your little hand warmer and it'll keep you warm on those cold days. Really, really useful. Um, stick it into the coat pocket and then when you stick your hands in, then it's nice and nice and warm. So that's really cool. Um, and it's reusable too. Like, I don't know how many times you can reuse this, but once um, you break the, the little uh, disc in there and the chemical reaction happens, um, all you have to do is boil it um, in hot water and, and then wait for it to kind of recharge itself or like break down again. Um, and then you just let it cool to room temperature and then you can use it all over again. So. That's really cool. Um, this is nice. It's a nice reusable little thing, especially uh, in cold weather when um, you're just kind of desperate. That's really sweet. And of course, the final thing in the box is the book itself. Uh, ooh, this is called The Guinevere Deception. So obviously something to do with Arthurian legend and that, but looks like it is told from the perspective of Guinevere and so often it's either King Arthur or Merlin or even Lancelot. So this looks like it could really be interesting. Um, it's written by Kirsten White. Um, I feel like I've heard, I've heard of her before. What else has she written? Oh, she wrote The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. 
Now I read that book. Um, it came in a another book box that I had subscribed to, the Once Upon a Book Club box, and I didn't love it. I will say I didn't love the dark descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. Um, it was too simplistic and it was just not enough. I mean, the, the Frankenstein book itself is so complex and has so many deeper and larger philosophical kind of arguments in it. It's such a complex narrative, the way it's nested. And yes, the character of Elizabeth Frankenstein is kind of almost like a throwaway in the book. She barely appears and it's, it's, she's more just like bait um, and a side character in and of itself in the book. And I was excited to read a book told from her perspective because I thought, you know, that rewrite, that retelling could be really, really interesting, but it never went beyond just a really basic retelling. And I was really disappointed in that. Um, I thought it could do a lot more, frankly. Um, so let's see how this goes. Um, maybe she'll do better with the King Arthur stories told from the perspective of Guinevere, because that's what it sounds like this is. It says, Princess Guinevere has come to Camelot to what a stranger, the charismatic King Arthur. With magic clawing at the kingdom's borders, the great wizard Merlin conjured a solution. Send in Guinevere to be Arthur's wife and his protector from those who want to see the young king's idyllic city fall. The catch? Guinevere's real name and her true identity is a secret. She is a changeling, a girl who has given up everything to protect Camelot. To keep Arthur safe, Guinevere must navigate a court in which the old, including Arthur's own family, demand that things continue as they have been. Those drawn have been uh, and, and, and the new, those drawn by the dream of Camelot fight for a better way to live. And always in the green hearts of forests and the black depths of lakes, magic lies in wait to reclaim the land. Arthur's knights believe they are strong enough to face any threat, but Guinevere knows it will take more than swords to keep Camelot free. Deadly jousts, duplicitous knights, and forbidden romances are nothing compared to the greatest threat of all, the girl with the long knotted black hair riding on horseback through the dark woods towards Arthur. Because when your whole existence is a lie, how can you trust even yourself? Hmm. This says this is the first book in the Camelot Rising trilogy. So it sounds like this is definitely going to be either a cliffhanger ending or something else is going to happen that makes you want to read the second book. <clears throat> I really hope this is going to be good. I really hope that um, it's going to be worth the trilogy, but we'll see how it goes. Um, again, <laughs> didn't like her previous book that I read. So again, the books are always signed, which is really cool. And then let's, let's check the binding inside after the dust covers off. Oh, that's really cool. So it's like green lettering. Um, it's the metallic hue. That's really nice. It's cool. So I'm assuming this is Excalibur and there's some keys to it. Um, but yeah, that's the book. And then of course inside also, uh, you always get like a little uh, Dear Reader a card from the author. Um, and she says, Dear Alcrate Reader, sometimes we need an escape, so I decided to run away to Camelot. I've always been drawn to Arthurian legends, magic versus order, old versus new, love versus duty. The sweeping romance of a city based on the idea that together we can build something better than what we came that came before and the creeping sorrow of knowing it can't last. But rather than a king and his sword, I wanted to follow a girl and her heart, a girl who is not a princess, but a changeling put in an impossible situation no one prepared her for. Don't we all sometimes feel like imposters in our own lives, hoping to find friends and companions who can help us see who we truly are? Come to Camelot with Guinevere and discover if, for yourself, wishing you wonder and magic. So interesting, it could be the start of a really great series. I'm hoping, uh, it will be, and that it won't be as disappointing as the Elizabeth Frankenstein book. But that's just me. I mean, if you really, if you really loved that novel, then um, you might be really excited for this book. Um, I'm cautiously optimistic, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but that's the book for this month. Um, and uh, again, the theme for this month was 
uh, tales of trickery. So I guess where that's where it comes in, because she's definitely kind of uh, pulling the wool over King Arthur's eyes and, and doing something, um, probably, that she will regret later. Because if you know the one of your story, she definitely does not have a happy ending. Um, I'm not giving any spoilers because this is the King Arthur story. She eventually has um, a romantic affair with Lancelot and they deceive King Arthur and he gets really mad. Uh, he finds out and it's like the ruin of Camelot and his dream. So I don't know if she's gonna work that in here because I feel like if she didn't, it wouldn't make any sense because that is that is the lore. Um, but it would be interesting to see what it's like from her, from Guinevere's perspective, because you don't really get that in the books, um, in the Arthur tales. And then next ye next month's theme for January is called uh, "Vengeance Will Be Mine," which sounds really interesting. Hmm. Um, and it also looks like they are teasing us with next month because they say that next month will also include a mug. Uh, this is the sneak peek. It will include a mug from one of their vendors, um, artist Kara Ko Kozik. So that's cool. You can look forward to that. So if you're interested in this box, and this is really beautiful. This is a beautiful postcard, postcard really beautiful art. So if you're interested in next month's box, this is for January. Um, and I'm interested to see what Stories will come of this because vengeance will be mine. Everybody loves a good revenge movie or a revenge book, so that'll be really cool to see. Um, yeah, so that was the Owl Crate December box. Let me know. Uh, so the thing I like most in this box is the book sleeve. That's probably my favorite uh, next to um, the little hand warmer. <laughs> this is super cute too. Um, I can definitely probably um, mail this actually to my sister who lives in a much colder climate than me and this will be a nice welcome little hand thing that you can put in your sleeve. So I might send that over. But those are my two favorite things in the box. What were yours? Let me know uh, in the comments below. Um, let me know if there's anything else you want me to talk about with kind of these book reviews. I try not to give too many spoilers in case you haven't read any of the series. Um, but let me know if any of the books that I kind of went over today, if you are uh, excited to read them too, if you have um, been reading the Children of Blood and Bone series or in the Holly Black Book of the Air series, uh, I am going to be starting uh, The Toll this week because I've gone through a couple of books and the next thing on my list is The Toll. So I'll let you know how I love that. It's a big kind of chunky book. So I'm a little like, uh, I'm a little intimidated by it, but I also don't really want the series to end, which means I'm procrastinating, but I really should, I really should read it. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you next month when we get to January's box and thanks for watching, bye.